This is part two of the ICOM 735FL32A installation. So my feedback sometimes says, don't show us all the gory details. Others say, show us everything. We want to be able to do it ourselves. So we're zoomed in right now. This is the FL32. There's a input and output of these two small uh, solder connections here and here. And the physical connections, the grounds are here and here. So I just finished those. And you can see the stock filter was here and here, and here and here for the input output, and the two mounting lugs are here. So that piece of the installation is done. Now we're gonna zoom back, and we should be able to now just flip the board over and start putting screws in. And you can see we've got lots of nice brass um, screws and the count would be, let's see, what do we have? Three in the front, three in the middle, three in the back. So there you go. If you have nine screws to put back and you've only gotten eight done, look for one more. So we're gonna do that next. And uh, I don't have the power screwdriver, so you guys will have to live with it. You have to, uh, let's see, be sure in the back that you have your four cables all free and not smashed under the board and also not the receive antenna input piece. So I'll turn this sideways. And uh, one thing I did before uh, starting this job was I had this little speaker sitting on the bench. So I took my Phillips screwdriver and I laid it across the back and I pulled it across a couple of times. So now when I want to put a screw in the radio, um, it, it'll hold it anyway, but once you get it on there, it, it makes it much easier and you're not going to drop screws down the inside of your radio. So I think I'll stand above and uh, start putting screws in. You can feel free to zoom ahead past all the screwdriver installation stuff. Then we'll get to the connectors. Get those all plugged back in again. Then we'll have that bracket that goes on the back. We'll get that in. Certainly different than the ASU FT817, which was simply uh, pull the cover, plug it in, and turn the radio back on. And if you're wondering what happened to the UKIT's radio. It's under the bench. Um, I'll, I'll post another update. So I couldn't check the uh, output transistor with it in circuit, so I went ahead and replaced the collector choke and powered up, and that immediately acted like a fuse and burned in half. So I will be posting a video to change that final and then uh, putting another RF choke in the collector, and that one should be back in business. All right, so I think this is our last screw. And then I guess like a good spare tire, I'm sorry for the bump. I'll check each one, make sure that we have them snug, but not too tight. I think the only surprising piece about this was uh, was missing one in the back. Was the bracket on the back? It felt like I was uh, going to break something prying it off once I took the screws out. But it certainly is a solid radio the way they put it together. All right, so there we have all the screws in. Now I'm going to start with this long cable because it routes over and then kind of goes, the cable itself goes behind the connector as you slide it in and then down. So that's that one. And then we have to, I think that cable should route up the hole and behind those connectors there. Then 
we have this cable. Let's see if I can get you a view. This cable comes around the back and it's fairly short and it can only reach this front connector here. These look like some kind of a coax connector. They actually seem to be pretty well thought out. And they push in pretty substantially. And then here's the last one of those coaxes. That one is here. And then we've got one more three conductor cable that comes around and plugs in here. And you can see that's keyed. So it's pretty hard to get that one wrong. And that one's in and pops down. Then this is the bracket that I told you about here. And you can see each side has a screw and then a fairly sizable hook on it. That's the other side. So we have to get that into the radio. And we have to keep rem <laughs> remembering. So we, we think this is right side up, but the radio is actually on its lid right now. So we need to install this upside down or what looks like upside down. And then I tried when I took it off to hook it on the side like this and then bring it across, but you can't because it interferes with the connectors. So you actually have to spread it apart a little bit. There's a little bit of an angle on these side pieces. And then we just have to push it on until it reaches the right hole and drops in while making sure that all the connectors on the back are correctly fitting through. So here's the last one. So that does that. And then oddly enough, there are countersink looking screws that fit here. I don't know why they're countersunk, but that's what they gave us. And that corner piece gets slightly sprung, so you have to pull it forward a bit to get that screw in. That gets that in. And then before we forget, the receive input antenna jack goes there, not in the transverter hole. Then I think we've got the wires down where they should be. We may be ready. Let's see what else is left here. There is So the important thing also is don't take <laughs> don't take these two screws out on the top or the bottom. That removes the basal, but it doesn't help you at all with the radio. So I'm just looking now. So to show you what I did, I have a, like an old plastic meat tray so that everything is contained. So all the black screws are on the outside of the case. And I need to look and make sure that I didn't miss any screws on the inside. So there's one, two, three. Oh, I did miss one. All right, that's why there's still one in the box. So we'll put that one in. So that one is here between the shields. That's good. That leaves two countersunk and two silver that were on the outside of the radio. So I think we're ready to go back in. Another interesting piece is too, um, oh, now I know which two we're looking for. So on the back of the radio to keep the, uh, the flip up feature from working, we have two silver, I think they're called panhead screws. Let's go here. Notice my magnetic screwdriver is picking things up off the bench now. And here. And 
And one thing I found is by making videos, when I take something apart, I have full documentation about how I took it apart. So that, that kind of helps. All right, now you'll notice that we have two case halves, one with a speaker and one not. So we need the uh, other side was on first, I believe. So I'll put it on right now with one screw. Also note that the speaker has its own mounting. It, it isn't at all connected to the case. So the, imp or the uh, idea I had was don't take out the speaker screws, but you actually need to take out the speaker screws. They're uh, sunk into that cast aluminum heat sink. So without the speaker screws out, there's no taking off the case. So in interest of speed, and to make the other half of the people happy, I'm gonna put one screw in the front of this half, and I'll put one screw on the other side so we won't make it watch all the screws go in, or maybe we'll put two in so it won't flap around. And uh, then you can see you saw it go back together without having to worry about a horde of screws. This is way more effort than I thought. I thought this could be a momentary thing before dinner, but it turned out to be not at all a, a quick a quick install. All right, then we have a bunch more black screws to put in, and I think that amounts to the uh, completion. So let me put one in, and we'll power up and just make sure that we have a narrow filter working. There's one in the front and one in the back. And someone tell me once, never put all the key screws back until you've tested it. So maybe that's the idea here. All right, let's see. We can flip it over. We've got Yisu power. I mean, pardon me. I got Icon power nearby here. And we've got a BNC adapter on the antenna. Let's see what happens. And let's see, the dummy load is in the right place. And let's see, we have, uh, <laughs> right now we have no sound. So let's see if that filter is in. Squelch is low. So I may have one more, th oh, I have a pop in the speaker. We're in CW mode, but I have absolutely no hiss right now, which is a bad sign. So regardless of the band, no sound. All right, well, I'm gonna go investigate why I don't have sound. So let's say not a success yet, and I'll post a comment once I get the audio working. So thanks for watching, see ya.